What is going on everyone? My name is Kodamore and welcome back to the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series Episode 33. In this episode we are going to work on a basic inventory system and picking up items. Because as you can see I am now able to chop down trees and mine out rocks in our world and they do drop items. However, whenever I walk over these two items here that were just dropped, as you can see nothing happens and my player isn't able to pick those items up. So let's figure out how we can actually get these items picked up. Now the item manager class here does a lot of work for us. In the tick method it basically goes through every item in the world, it ticks it and then it makes sure if it has to be removed or not and if it does then it removes the item from the world. And remember that we're going to be doing that by, if we go into the item class here, it has a count variable or the amount of items in this little item instance here. So if this count variable ever equals the picked up value of negative one, then the item manager automatically removes it from the world, except we currently have no way to tell if this count variable should be set to picked up if the player picked up the item. And luckily we have done a lot of hard work in the past, so this should be fairly easy to implement. Basically, if the player's bounding rectangle overlaps with the current item's bounding rectangle, then that means the item should be picked up, the player has walked over the item. And because every single item's tick method is always being called by the item manager, that's a perfect place to actually put the code to check if it should be picked up or not. And if the item should be picked up, all we have to do is set the count variable equal to the picked up value of negative one, and everything will be handled for us. So first things first, let's actually create the bounding rectangle for the item here. So I'm going to create a protected rectangle variable called bounds here, and we're going to go ahead and import all that. And then in the constructor here, we will just create the actual bounds rectangle. So so bounds equals a new rectangle. For now, we can plug in x and y, even though those values haven't been set yet in the constructor, but that's fine. And then we're going to plug in item width and item height as the width and height of this rectangle. Now, if you just do this, it will not work. Remember down here in the create new, we call this set position of the new element that we're creating. So in the set position function down here, we have to make sure that we update the boundary rectangle. So bounds.x equals x and bounds.y equals y. If we don't do this, then it will not work whatsoever. So now the boundary rectangle for every item is being properly set up with the x and y and width and height that it needs. So in the tick method here, we can just begin checking if the player has walked over it or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if our handler dot get world dot get enemy manager dot get player so if our player dot get collision bounds and we can just plug in zero for the x and y offsets here just so we get the plain old collision boundary rectangle of the player now if that intersects with the current items bounds the bounds rectangle that we just created then that means the item should be picked up so for right now we will just go ahead and set the count of this item right here equal to picked up which is the variable that we created just up here called picked up and that's set equal to negative one. And that's it. So now if we hover over or rather if we walk over an item in our game, we should get that item to disappear. So there we go, the item has appeared and if I walk over it, the item disappears from the world because that if statement run and the item manager picked it up for us. Except now they're just vanishing from our world. We're not actually storing the item anywhere for the player to use. So let's work on a very, very, very basic inventory system. Now before we go ahead and create the inventory, we are gonna add a bit more functionality into our key manager class here. First things first, let's make this key manager class a little less error prone. So currently we are just randomly setting a random index in the keys array here, and that could possibly throw an error. If we pass in accidentally, let's say the value of negative one or something, or a value higher than 256, which we initialize the array at. So we are just gonna make sure and check that the e.getKey code, oops, key code here, is less than zero, or if e.getKeyCode is greater than or equal to keys.length, then we just want to return and don't even try setting this array or else we're gonna get an error. Again, this is just to make it a little less error prone. So if we accidentally get a key value larger than 255 as an index, it won't throw an error or anything. Okay, so now what functionality are we gonna implement? Currently, we can tell if whether or not a key is or isn't being pressed. But that's not very useful for things like opening or closing an inventory screen. Let's say I want the letter E to open and close an inventory screen. What I want to happen is that once a tick method goes through, it registers that the E key has been pressed and returns true. But we don't want that same function to return true until the user has released the E key 
and then if he presses it again, it will return true one more tick frame. And then it'll return false until the user releases the key, and then he can press it again. So basically, we are checking if a key has just been pressed, and that's all. So in order to check for that, we are just going to add a few more arrays. We're going to add a just pressed and a can't press array. And in the constructor, we are just going to set these arrays equal to a new boolean array with the same size as the keys array. So I'm just going to add keys.length. That way, every single array here is the same exact size, which is very important for this. Whoops, let's see if I can type here. There we go, so now we've initialized those two new arrays. Okay, so in order to actually add this functionality, we're gonna have to go into the tick method here, and we are going to loop through every single possible key code that we are storing inside of these arrays. So basically, we're just going to loop through for i is less than keys.length, and we're just going to increment i there. So we're gonna loop through every single possible key code that we are storing. Next, we're just gonna need a few if statements. First, we're gonna check if the can't press at i, because i is the current key code that we're checking in this for loop. So if can't press at a key code returns true, that means that value has already returned true for one tick frame, so we can't return true anymore. So if we can't press this particular key, and we can't, or rather the key is no longer being pressed, so the keys array returns false, that means the player has released the key, and they should be able to press it again and have the just pressed array return true for that key. So we're just going to go ahead and set can't press at the key code equal to false. That way they are now able to press it again. Else, if the just pressed array at key code returns true, meaning that for one tick method we've already returned true that this key has been pressed, then we are going to set the can't press array, can't press at the key code equal to true. We don't want them to press it until they release the key. And we are going to set the just pressed array at i equal to false because it has no longer just been pressed, it's been pressed for more than one tick frame. And finally, if we are able to press a key, so if not can't press at i, so if we are able to press it, and of course the keys array returns true at that key, meaning it has just been pressed, then of course we can just set the just pressed array at that equal to true. Now I'm going to briefly explain this once more, but in just a little bit. First, let's actually figure out how we can actually use all this new functionality. So from anywhere in our game, but for right now, just for testing, I'm going to do it right inside of this tick method. I'm going to call that function that we just created. So if key just pressed, and you can pass in any key code that you like. So key event dot vk underscore, we'll say the e key. So if the e key has just been pressed, then I am just going to output to the console e just pressed, like so. Just for testing purposes, let me pull up the console here so we can all see it. And if we go ahead and run the game here, if I press the e key and I'm holding the key, as you can see, it says e just pressed only one time. If I release it, nothing happens, but if I press it again, it says e just pressed, but it only says that whenever it is pressed separately. So as you can see, that can be very useful for opening up different types of menu screens and all of that inside of our game. So I'll go ahead and delete this test code. So if you just go ahead and make your way through this code for one specific key, it should become quite clear how this actually works. Basically, we just make sure that we are able to press a key and that that key is being pressed to set the just pressed array to true. And then we wait until the key has no longer been pressed, so the key is released before we are able to actually return true again in that just pressed array. But now we have key just pressed working inside of our key manager there. So now let's go ahead and move on to the inventory. So for the remainder of this episode, we are just going to be working on the inventory logic. We're not gonna work with any of the graphics for the inventory just yet. That will be in the next tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an inventory class and put it in a new package called inventory. And like all many good aspects of our game, the constructor for the inventory is going to take in a handler object so we can access a bunch of things. So this.handler equals handler. And of course, we're going to want to create that variable, private handler, handler, and we're importing everything. We're also going to create another variable. It's going to be a Boolean called active. And we can just make sure that that's set to false to begin with. And then we're going to go ahead and create the very famous tick and render methods for the inventory. The render will take in a graphics G object, of course, and we'll import that. And then real quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and generate the getters and setters for just the handler, actually, and plop those inside of our game just so we can access the handler from other places. 
the getters and setters. Now this inventory screen isn't obviously going to be on the screen the entire time. So before we actually tick or render anything in the inventory, we're just going to make sure and check that the inventory should actually be displayed and tick. So if not active, so if active equals false, then we're just going to return right away from both of these methods, as well as the render method here. So we're not going to tick or render the inventory if, obviously, the player doesn't want to see it. Except we actually want to be able to turn the inventory on and off. So before this if statement check in the tick method, make sure you do this before, we're going to check if our handler dot get key manager dot key just press that method that we just created. And whatever key that you want to toggle on and off the inventory, so I'm going to do key event dot vk underscore e, I'm going to do the e key, but you can do whatever key you like. So if the e key has just been pressed, then we're going to set active equal to not active. So basically we are just going to invert whatever the active value is. So if active is false, we'll set it equal to true. If active is true, we'll set it equal to false essentially turning on and off the inventory screen. Now before I forget, let's go ahead into our player class here and actually give the player an inventory. So at the top here, we are just going to go ahead and create an inventory object called inventory, like so, and we're gonna import it. And then within the player constructor, we're gonna say inventory equal to a new inventory and pass through the handler object into the inventory's constructor. And then at the bottom of the tick method within the player, we are going to want to tick the inventory, so inventory.tick, and then scroll on down to your render method, and in the render method here, we're going to do inventory.render passing through the graphics G object. And of course, the inventory's tick and render methods already handle if whether or not they really should be ticking or rendering, essentially if the player wants to see the inventory. So just to make sure that everything is working properly here, below these two if statements in the tick method, I'm just going to output something, say inventory working, like so below the two if statements. And if I go ahead and expand up our console here and we run the game, then if I press the E key once, then obviously inventory working starts spamming the screen. But if I press the E key again, that message stops appearing. So as you can see, by pressing the E key once, it turns it on, Pressing it again turns it off, the tick and render methods. So that means everything is working properly for the inventory here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that test code. Okay, like I said, we're not going to do any graphical work with the inventory today. We are just going to get the logic of the inventory down. Again, inventory systems can be complex and they can also be really easy. So we are just going to go with one of the most basic forms of handling inventory items. And one of the simplest forms to do that is just to create a private array list of items and we'll just call this inventory items just to be a bit more descriptive within our inventory class here and within the constructor we're going to go ahead inventory items equals a new array list of item like so and the logic of this inventory really only contains two main methods so i'm just going to make a new section inventory methods and within this inventory methods section we are going to have a public void add item, which is just going to take in an item called item as a parameter here. Now, because I don't plan this series out too, too well, we're going to have to make one more change to the item and item manager classes. For some reason, I thought it would be a great idea to have this count variable be set equal to picked up to indicate that the item has been picked up. But once I got to this inventory section here, I realized that was an absolutely horrible idea. So we are going to leave the count variable just to indicate the count or the amount of items within this one item instance. And to indicate whether or not it should be picked up or not, we'll create a protected boolean called picked up and set that equal to false to begin with. And we can also delete up here this picked up constant of negative one. I don't know why I thought this was a smart idea, but this is a much better idea. Now that means within our item here, we are just going to, when we set count equal to picked up within this tick method here, instead we will just set the picked up value equal to true. And we will also go ahead and just generate a getter for the picked up value. So is picked up, we're just going to generate that getter and add it into our class. Which means over in the item manager class here, instead of checking if the items count equals picked up, we're just going to check instead if i dot is picked up. Then we will remove the item from this item manager here. Those were some minor changes, but anyways, let's get back to this inventory. So what we're gonna do is we are going to do for item i in our inventory items array list. So for every single item within this inventory items array list, we're going to check if i.getID, so if the id of the item in the array list 
is the same thing as the item that we're trying to add to the inventory, so item.getID. If those IDs match, then all we're gonna have to do is set the item that's already inside of our inventory, and we're gonna set the count of that item to the count of that item plus the count of the new item that we're trying to add to the inventory. And then we're just going to return right from there. However, if this for loop goes through every single item in our inventory and we don't already have that same type of item, then we have to just add the item to the inventory. So we can do inventory items.add and we're going to add our item object there. And that should be it for adding an item to our inventory. If we already have the item, it'll just add to the count of that item. If not, it'll add the item separately to that list. Now, of course, we actually want to add the items that we end up picking up to this inventory. So within the item class here, whenever we see that the player has picked up the item, we set picked up equal to true, but we also want to add the item to the inventory. So handler.getWorld dot get entity manager dot get player dot get inventory which we're gonna have to create within the player class dot add item and we can just add this instance that we just picked up to the inventory so once again go into the player class here and we want to make sure that we go ahead and generate the getter and setter so I suppose for the inventory and just add that into your player class. So now the errors go away here, and we, sh and we should be successfully adding items to our inventory whenever we pick them up. So to test if this works, in our inventory here, below these if statements in the tick method, I'm just going to output inventory, so the start of the inventory, and then I'm gonna go ahead and loop through every item within our inventory items array list, and we're, I'm gonna say the i.get name, so I'm gonna do the item name, a couple of spaces and then also output the item count or how many of that item that we have just to see if this is working so also in my world class I'm just gonna add a couple more entities to test out here I'll just copy that down and change this to 6 and 850 just to add a few more entities to our world all right let's see if our inventory base class is working as it should let me go ahead and clear this console here and we'll go ahead and run the game okay great so if I go ahead and chop down this tree, now before I pick any items up, if I hit E, we get inventory that has obviously nothing in it. If I pick up the item and I hit E again, as you can see, it has inventory wood and we have one piece of wood within our inventory. Let me go ahead and collect a few more items here. So I've collected a rock and another piece of wood. If I go through, we have wood two, rock one. And of course, if we mine out the last rock and we already collect that item and we run the inventory again by pressing E to toggle on and off the inventory, we can see that we have two pieces of wood and two rocks within our inventory. So that is good. That means our inventory or at least the base inventory class is working. I'll go ahead and delete that test code. So now we can actually begin working on the graphical part of the inventory, which of course makes it more like a real game. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video.